the X. CQ the X. CQ the X. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome to... Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating world of radio communications. Hi, amigos radio aficionados and guests, you are listening to the weekend edition of the Access Unlimited, the one and only radio hobby program that covers all of the more than 19 different ways that you and I can enjoy this wonderful hobby. From talking to our friends using the ham radio satellite to having a good time listening to an FM broadcast band station that is reaching you by means of a tropos propagation mode that can make a faraway FM station sound like a local one for as short as a few minutes or for as long as several hours or even days at a time depending on weather patterns. And just as read, the radio hobby is simply fascinating because there's always something new happening. And now here is at the request of several listeners a short explanation of the way I present the radio signals of the short wave bands below. For all practical purposes, that openings are split by experts categories according to the distance between the stations involved. Short distance communications is described as between 100 to 500 nautical miles. Typically involves the use of the near vertical internet skyway propagation mode using the frequency range from about 2 to 8 megahertz. And it's also possible during very intense variety band openings that can send back to us at short distances signals of frequency up to 8 getting in 100 megahertz. Short distance communications on the 2 to 8 megahertz range is of great importance during emergencies and they can provide very reliable links when all other systems fail, including cell phones and the like. As radio observers have demonstrated this many times, when natural disasters or major accidents have happened, the near vertical incident skyway propagation between 2 and 8 megahertz is fantastically effective. Now, medium distance shortwave communications links are described by experts as those that span between 500 to 3,000 nautical miles. And they comprise practically all of the so called single hop mode propagation via the F layer of the ionosphere. Double hop sporadic heat propagation can make signals of frequency above 20 megahertz to reach up to 2,000 miles and eventually also to 3,000 miles. But they are very sporadic as the name propagation mode set. For the average amateur radio station for shortwave visitors, the medium distance signals are the strongest one heard, and those that provide the best and most enjoyable and reliable two-way contact for ham or easy listening for the shortwave listeners. Medium distance communications on the high frequency band between 3 and 30 megahertz are still of great importance for the long-range air traffic control system, the so-called LDOC, long distance operation centers of air traffic control that rely on them to keep track of flights that are out of reach of the standard VHF short range communication system. Finally, high frequency band propagation experts who describe that frequency range as between 3 and 30 megahertz, also known as the incandescent wavelength radio frequency spectrum, tell us that long distance communication links are those that span across the of more than 3,000 nautical miles and are, in fact, the most unreliable and difficult to predict when and for how long they will be open. Radio amateurs by the way have made substantial contributions to the art and science of shortwave propagation by doing long periods of observation, some of which have led to relevant discoveries, like the well-documented trans-equatorial propagation or TEP mode that was actually a discovery by dedicated radio materials that were doing experiments on the 28 megahertz and 50 megahertz band, 10 and 6 meters. At this time, if you're listening to the weekend edition of the Access Unlimited, the sun is showing more activity than what it had two weeks ago, and that is the reason why you are able to pick up many more stations on the frequency range between 15 and 30 megahertz, especially during the local daytime hours. The improvement present improvement in propagation conditions will show up primarily on the medium frequency and the medium range and long range propagation path. But it will be especially appreciated on the more than 3,000 nautical miles propagation path on frequency between 20 and 30 megahertz. And it's very difficult to forecast solar cycle 24 continues with its ups and downs. Scientists are still undecided. 
excited about when the second peak of solar activity will be happening, and even if it would happen at all. When George Cooley began listening to shortwave radio way well back in the mid 1950s, when I was a teenager, propagation conditions were certainly modified much better than what is happening in about 2004. Solar researchers are forecasting even lower solar activity during the next several solar cycles. Stay tuned for more radio power related information coming from La Habana, Cuba. I'm your host, Arne Cordo, Radio Amateur 2 kk My email is info rhc at enet.cu, and we are always QRV at that email address. In just a few seconds, after a short break for an ID of the station, I will be back with you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 